Hi, it's Paul Maunder from Production Expert. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the new features in Isotope RX11 and RX11 Advanced. Let's start with the module which I use more than any other, Dialog Isolate. As you can see, this has a new look, but more importantly, it's been completely revised under the hood and now offers control over not only voice and noise, but also reverb. In fact, Dialog Isolate now includes a real-time plug-in version. Let's take a listen to this in Pro Tools. On this track, I have a stereo dialog recording, which has some background noise and reverb. So going to the inserts, scroll down to the isotope category, we've now got RX11 Dialog Isolate. And before I actually apply any settings, here's the unprocessed recording. This is a stereo recording made in a domestic basement. One, two, three, four, five. So, obvious noise problems with reverb, let's try Dialog Isolate. This is a stereo recording made in a domestic basement. One, two, three, four, five. That's done a very effective job of removing the noise. How about the reverb? This is a stereo recording made in a domestic basement. One, two, three, four, five. That's a really good result. Let's do an A-B comparison. So here it is before. This is a stereo recording made in a domestic basement. And after. This is a stereo recording made in a domestic basement. Having tried this on quite a large number of clips now, I'd say that this is audibly better than the previous version of Dialog Isolate. This is thanks to the revised machine learning algorithm. In fact, in addition to the real-time version we've just heard, when used as either audio suite or directly within RX itself, you also have the option for a higher quality non-real-time render, which should give even better results. Let's try processing that same piece of audio with the exact same settings I just used in Pro Tools, but using the best offline algorithm. This is a stereo recording made in a domestic basement. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Let's hear some more real-time examples in Pro Tools. This one is very severe. I'll just play a little section of it. I think it's a real, it's a real mix. And we have certain countries like Norway where... So this should be a very good test for Dialog Isolate. I think it's a real, it's a real mix. And we have certain countries like Norway where I think it was last year, 22% of all new vehicles were electric. Good result. It's unusual that you would receive something as noisy as that, but it just shows how effective this is. Something a little bit more straightforward, general broadband noise. I like its performance. Uh, it's quick and it's comfortable. I like the autopilot because when the traffic's really congested, you can you still have to concentrate, but you can concentrate slightly less as it takes over some of the driving. Um, okay, and just an A-B comparison on this one. Here's before, and then partway in, I'll unbypass it. I like its performance. Uh, it's quick and it's comfortable. I like the autopilot because when the traffic's really congested. And in practice, you probably wouldn't process it that heavily if it was a video, so you might go with something more like this, perhaps. I like its performance. Uh, it's quick and it's comfortable. I like the autopilot. An excellent sounding result there. A couple of other examples. This one. I like to think we get to a point where we're relying solely on our skill and relying on a certainty that we are going to make it. And For this next one, I want to show you one of the advanced features. So if you have Isotope RX11 advanced, you also have the accompanying plugin, which has this section, which is for multiband processing. So on a band by band basis, which is fully adjustable with these sliders, you can control the amount of processing which happens. Let's try it with this one. This is an example of some general background noise from a fan. It doesn't contain any particularly low frequency content, but there is some noise slightly higher up the frequency spectrum. Let's play this a couple more times and try and get this adjusted. So we're just mostly affecting the area which needs processing. This is an example of some general background noise from a fan. It doesn't contain any particularly low frequency content, but there is some noise slightly higher up the frequency spectrum. This is an example of some general background noise from a fan. It doesn't contain any particularly low frequency content, but there is some noise slightly higher up the frequency spectrum. So this is a nice feature because it allows you to home in on the particular problem ranges and process less, or not at all, the ones which are not an issue. Next, going back into RX11 itself, we'll take a look at the updated and improved Repair Assistant. This of course has a new look, and one thing which existing RX users will notice is that we now have just two processing modes to choose from, voice and music. Previously we had four which were called voice, musical, percussion and sound effects. Now because of revised machine learning algorithms, just voice and music cover everything, with voice working on dialogue or vocals and music for full music mix recordings or individual instruments. 
Here I have some noisy dialogue, so I'll switch it into voice mode, but before we actually process it, let's just hear the unprocessed raw recording. Pick up from six and action. Six, why? What needs are satisfied by the SAP? What will be different in the community once the SAP is complete? Okay, so various problems there, noise, reverb. Let's try and click on the learn function here. It's gonna scan the audio and hopefully come up with the best suggested processing settings. And remember, this updated version utilizes new machine learning technology for better results. And also we have deeper controls than before. So we've got more scope for making adjustments once it's come up with its own suggested settings, which it has. So let's take a listen. Pick up from six and action. Six, why? What needs are satisfied by the SAP? What will be different in the community once the SAP is complete? I'm actually very happy with that, so I don't think I'm going to adjust it, but we've got complete control over the amount of denoising, the de-reverb, various other attributes, and of course, as before, if you want to, you can open up the module chain so you can really see what it's doing on a processor-by-processor -processor basis and adjust them as needed. The next feature we'll look at is entirely new in RX11, both standard and advanced, and it's called Streaming Preview. Essentially, this allows you to take a final master of a song or potentially a post-production mix for some video content, bring it into RX and apply the loudness normalization and lossy encoding that streaming platforms use. This of course enables you to hear it precisely how it will sound on those platforms. Isotope's recommended workflow is to use one of the included presets for whichever platform and setting is applicable to you. And as you can see, all of the major ones are here and with each preset, it includes the codec, quality and loudness. The song I have here is from the Pro Tools demo session, Can't Get Enough, and I haven't mastered it, so it's fairly quiet. And as we can see, if we look at the waveform stats, it has an integrated loudness of minus 18.9 LUFs. There's an option in Streaming Preview to apply positive gain. When this is on, if your audio is below the target loudness level, it will aim to increase the loudness, but only to a maximum, so that the highest peak within your audio doesn't exceed minus one dB true peak. By default, this setting is enabled or disabled with each preset as it would be on any given platform, but you can switch it manually if you like. Let's try the Spotify Quiet Volume preset since its target level is close to what we have already. In fact, it's only 0.1 LU lower than what we already have, so when I render this, Streaming Preview will allow us to hear what the Spotify codec will sound like with these particular settings. Next, let's take a look at another new module in RX11 and RX11 Advanced, Loudness Optimize. This module gives you information and control over your audio's loudness measurement and the relative gate in the BS1770 loudness algorithm. When momentary loudness falls below this gate, of course, it doesn't contribute to the file's overall integrated loudness measurement. By applying upward compression, Loudness Optimize can actually bring the quiet content above the gate. This causes it to contribute to the measurement and actually reduce your audio's integrated loudness. That might sound counterintuitive initially, but remember, these were sections of the audio which initially fell below the gate and therefore didn't get factored in to the total average or integrated loudness. Let's see how this works. With this particular piece of audio, 77% of it has been measured. In other words, that's the percentage of the audio which was above the level of the gate. So therefore, everything below this line has not been factored in. So if I wanted to apply that upward compression, I can do it one of two ways. The manual way would be to use these controls, the boost being the maximum amount of boost it will apply. Threshold is of course a level at which it starts to actually act. The ratio, much like that of a compressor, dictates exactly how heavy that processing is gonna be once it hits the threshold. So you could have it really light at one point something to one, or you could have it very extreme, 30 to one. And the speed is just the speed of onset of this processing. You could set all of that manually with a little bit of trial and error, or, you might want to click on the learn function and it's going to scan the audio and you can see it's training the loudness optimize module and now it's suggested some settings for us. So I'll render this, but before I do, take note of the fact that currently we're on 77% measured with an integrated loudness of minus 18.93 LUFs. So here we go. Okay, now we're on 90% measured and the integrated loudness has actually gone down to minus 19.43 LUFs. That doesn't mean it will sound quieter, but the idea of this is to kind of exploit the relative gate by bringing more of your content just above it, thereby contributing to the reading, giving a lower loudness measurement. And so when it gets loudness normalized on a streaming platform, it will be brought up more than it otherwise would. 
Next, we'll look at the improvements which have been made to the Music Rebalance module, available in RX11 Standard and Advanced. This features revised and improved stem separation, resulting from upgraded machine learning based on what Isotopes say is the most modern neural network available. Music Rebalance now allows for cleaner separation and rebalancing of the component parts of an existing mix. Let's give this a try. So, just play a little section of this music. Love should take your breath away But you, I get lost for days Okay, and now we'll preview this and we'll try and isolate the vocal. Can't find the words to say But you're the one I want to hold You're my shelter from the cold I feel it inside, I can take on the world I'm so confident That's actually very good. This is everything I dreamed of a special kind of there is quite a bit of latency when you click something before it actually happens, as you can hear. Let's try removing the drums. You can see the latency I'm talking about. We were just trying to have fun now here, feeling starting to grow a little stronger. And what I think might be interesting here is to try the stem split feature. Now, of course, this isn't a new feature, but for the purposes of this video, it should make it easy for us to listen to each of the component parts, vocals, bass, percussion, and other. Hopefully, the resulting stem should sound cleaner and better than before, given the fact that this is based on new algorithms. So across the top, we've now got tabs for each of those. So here's the vocal. Love should take your breath away, but you, I get lost for days. And then bass is on this one. Percussion. This is quite a considerable improvement on the previous version. That's very clean considering it's from a completely mixed track. And the other instruments, anything which didn't fall into any of those categories, let's just see what we've ended up with here. That looks like it could be percussion. Oh no. Just a little hint of the vocal reverb in there, but nothing major. And one other thing, if I wanted even better quality, I could have rendered it with the best quality option. Something else which is new in RX11, again, both in standard and advanced, is the mid-side mode. This is accessed from the view menu, and instead of displaying a stereo track as left and right, it displays it as its mid and side components, so you can process them separately. So in the case of this track, Love should take your breath away. If I click in the top half, I can just play the center components, vocals, bass, whatever is in the middle. Or if I click at the bottom, those are those side components. Click back somewhere else. Being able to separate the mid and side components very easily like that in the spectrogram means that we can see it, we can edit it, we can apply any of the noise reduction or processing modules, and it's just a really convenient feature. Next, let's look at Dialog Contour. This is still RX Advanced only, and it's received an overhaul. Isotope have enhanced it with new controls to provide more ways to adjust the character and expressivity of a voice. New additions include controls for formant and variation, and these two curves displayed over the waveform view. The greyed out curve is the original pitch of the selected audio. The orange curve is the projected pitch based on the parameters set by the user, and this will update to reflect any subsequent changes. As you can see, I've already made some adjustments to the selected audio by adding nodes to the pitch curve. Here's the audio before adjustment. Isotope RX11 dialogue contour is ideal in situations where the inflection isn't right, and after. Isotope RX11 Dialog Contour is ideal in situations where the inflection isn't right. And the new formant slider applies a global formant shift in semitones to the selected audio. Formants are essentially resonances of a vocal tract that define the timbre of a voice. They're independent of pitch, so adjusting formants won't update the pitch curve display. Shifting formants up makes the voice sound thinner. 
Isotope RX11 dialogue contour is ideal in situations where the inflection isn't right, while shifting them down makes the voice sound heavier and bigger. Used in moderation, this could help to make edited dialogue sound more natural, or you could use more extreme settings like I have for creative effect. Isotope RX11 dialogue contour is ideal in situations where the inflection isn't right. The variation control adjusts the expressivity of a voice by scaling the existing pitch variations. When the variation is set to minus 100%, the pitch becomes robotic and very flat. Isotope RX11 dialogue contour is ideal in situations where the inflection isn't right. And plus 100% will essentially double any existing pitch variations. Isotope RX11 dialogue contour is ideal in situations where the inflection isn't right. Of course, in practice, you would very rarely use it to those extremes, but these new controls in the dialogue contour module just provide us with more control and options for shaping dialogue. I've covered most of the new features in RX11, but there's a couple more. Going into preferences, we now have this option to refresh audio devices. So if, for example, you were to switch on or connect an audio interface after starting RX and you wanted to use it as an output device, you could just click on this little refresh option and then you'd see it in the output device list. The final feature to mention is ARA support for the RX Spectral Editor. For supported doors, Isotope provided new digital signal processing so you can clean your audio without ever leaving the door. This includes essential tools like gain, de-click and de-hum. In this initial release, this is only available for Logic Pro. What's more, this is only in Rosetta mode. But we're told that additional host support is coming in a free update this summer for both Pro Tools and Studio One. So that's an overview of the new and updated features in Isotope RX11 and RX11 Advanced. For more information, head over to the Production Expert blog or visit isotope.com. Thanks for watching.